while it may not seem that way, when we review charts today, as the markets sit as of the close on Friday, March 1st, the bears actually now have the probabilistic edge over the bulls. However, action last week did leave a crack in the push higher door for the bulls. The question is, will the bulls walk through that door? We should know a lot. The charts we'll look at today on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. We'll talk about what to look for. We've got a very long video here, so we'll move quickly on this slide. May not feel that way, but risk off has actually been the winner over the past month, and we'll show evidence of that. We've been stating for weeks that the risk-reward ratio for investors was weak, and the last four weeks bear that out. We'll review DeMarc counts for the S&P 500. The net-net bottom line is the highest probability scenario with what we know as of the close on Friday, March 1st, is limited upside maybe 1519 to 1550 ish and 1519 tells you that we may have already peaked i believe we closed at 1518 the second probabilistic scenario would actually be several weeks of upside because where the demark counts are now they're either going to hold in this area or we really have to start over with new counts the least probabilistic scenario and it's still possible anything's possible is a quick spike up to 1575 and then a reversal. There just wouldn't be enough time to have new DeMarc counts play out for scenario three. Doesn't mean it can happen, but it seems the least likely. We'll review these risk on, risk off charts to try to get an idea of which way things are leaning from a probabilistic perspective. As we've said, for the last few weeks, a scenario of consolidation to sideways to down still seems to play out. It doesn't mean we can't bounce higher even under this scenario. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. Before we get into the meat of today's video, let's go back and look at the poor risk-reward outlook we've been discussing for the past few weeks. On February 1st, the S&P 500 closed at 1513. So over the last month, let's look at the S&P 500's risk and reward. The move from 1513 to 1531 here on February 19th is a gain of 18 points. That's your reward. The risk from February 1st and 1513 down to this low on February 25th of 1487 is 26 points. So indeed, over the last month, the risk-reward ratio for investors has been poor. You've taken 26 points worth of downside risk and the gain has only been 18 points. And more importantly, over the last month, the move has been 1513 to the close on Friday, March 1st of 1518. So capital has been in harm's way for a full month here for a gain of five points on the S&P 500. Over the last three weeks, it's even worse. If you've been fully invested in risk assets or stocks, you've been in harm's way for three weeks here, the reward has been absolutely zero. We closed at February 8th at 1518, and the close on Friday, March 1st was again 1518. Nowhere. On the bullish side of the ledger, you can make an argument that this is somewhat of a head and shoulders pattern. This is a shoulder, this is the head, and this is a very small right shoulder. If this pattern were to play out, we have to keep an open mind. Its target would be 1545 on the S&P 500 or above this high here. I don't think that's the highest probability scenario going forward, 
but it is one probability and this pattern is here and we'll respect that and see how things play out next week. We've also noted that the risk reward ratio for risk on relative to risk off back here was poor. Over the last month, risk off has actually won. This is the S&P 500 divided by bonds. The ratio was here on February 1st. Now it's down here one month later on March 1st. So what this tells you is someone that bought TLT or long-term treasury bonds made a better decision a month ago than someone that bought stocks. This chart here looks like risk off and risk off has been the winner over the past month. Let's look at the credit markets over the past month. This is February 1st here. These are junk bonds, riskier bonds relative to safer bonds, quote unquote. I use the term loosely, TLT. So this is higher risk bonds relative to lower risk bonds or risk on relative to risk off. When the ratio rises, this is risk on. When the ratio falls, this is risk off. Over the last month, risk off has won. Here's where the ratio was on February 1st. Over the last month, you'd be better off owning TLT than JNK. Credit markets are often early. Stock market tends to follow the credit markets. So as this chart sits now, there are still yellow flags in place for risk on. Now we're looking at a daily DeMarc chart for the S&P 500 index. DeMarc charts and indicators are proprietary tools from Market Studies LLC. Let's start with propulsion. This is an upside magnet, this teal triangle here sits at 1521 and change on the S&P 500. Here's my downside magnet down at 1465 and change. This is a TDST support level and it's at 1457. So based on this upside magnet and these downside quote unquote targets, my risk reward ratio as it sits now is poor. There's a however coming. Sometimes when the market closes near these teal triangles or these teal magnets as we did here and here on Friday, March 1st, it can foreshadow a breakout to the upside. We're still below it, so we'll respect it, but it can mean a push higher could be coming. Now let's look at DeMarc counts. This is the current aggressive combo count. We've got a 9 here in blue paired with a 13 here. For those of you who follow our work or DeMarc, you know that a 9 paired with a 13 can signal potential trend exhaustion. and It tells us that the probability of a rollover here is higher as long as this 9 and 13 is in force. This is the risk level. It's still in play. It's a dotted line. It tells us that this 9 and this 13 are still a valid count. The level that we're watching for this 9 and 13 is 1520, roughly, or 1519.77 on the S&P 500. We closed below it on Friday at 1518. If we move back above 1519.77 into this area here, and the longer we stay there, the lower the probability that this is a valid 913. Let's look at the aggressive sequential count. It too has a valid 9 paired with a 13 here. The risk level, or think of it as the stop loss level, if I decided to short this market based on a 9 and 13, we have not shorted this market at any point in this area nor have we bought bonds yet. Why? We just don't think the market's given us a clear signal one way or another. 
This market has not been particularly bullish or particularly bearish. The level to watch for this count is 1528.97 or roughly 1529. As long as the market stays below that level, the probability of this 9 and this 13 being a good rollover signal increase. For above this level, they start to decrease. Let's look at the standard combo count. It too is on a 9 and a 13. You can see the last time we had a 13 here back on December 19th was a good signal. The market dropped all the way till December 31st. 9 paired with a 13, the level to watch there. 1533.45. If upside is in our picture, the sequential count is on a 912. And let's go back in history and see some other 912. So if I scroll backwards, you can see here I had a 912 on that count on April 2nd of 2012. When the 13 came, the market was weak, and as it turned out, the 912 was the actual peak in this market. So on a sequential count, the 912 actually marked the market's peak. Had the 913 the following day on April 3rd, and stocks went down after that. The point of that is we will respect this 9 and this 12, if we see a 13 next week, it's possible that we could see a rollover. One point of showing all this is if we move above these other active counts, so for example, let's say the stock market takes out 1533.45. There are no other active counts here to really pick up the slack. So what it says is, the S&P 500, as far as these DeMarc counts go, probably has limited upside, maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of 1533 to 1545-ish, 1550-ish. If we move much above that, that would tend to negate all of these counts, and we'd have to start over. We're on a one count here. It would take us at least eight trading days to get to this nine here, and then another four trading days to get to a 13, which says we may be three weeks away from another 9 and a 13. Can markets peak without an active 913? They can, but it's rare. So what that tells us is probably limited upside or we've got several weeks of upside. We'll keep an open mind and just see how things play out next week. Now we'll look at some risk-on, risk-off charts to get some idea from a technical perspective which way this market is leaning. This is a weekly risk-on relative to risk-off. This is the S&P 500 relative to TLT or Treasuries. You can see here the ratio hit resistance. It was part of a consolidation process in the S&P 500 here. This is the S&P 500 weekly consolidation actually made a higher high here, so we could still see a higher high under this scenario. Sideways, down. Here, this acted as resistance. Sideways, down. You can see here you did get a bounce, so we could still see some bounce, but eventually it was down. This trend line here, we've been consolidating around it now for one, two, three, four, five weeks. We actually cut back on our risk tremendously right here five weeks ago. That's turned out to be a good move. This is a very indecisive market. If we can move into this area here, that would be bullish for stocks and commodities. If we come down this way in this direction, as we did here, and the ratio's falling, stocks tend to fall. When the ratio's falling, stocks consolidate and or fall. Now let's shift gears and see what some other risk-on, risk-off ratios are telling us. 
Now we're looking at a daily version of risk on relative risk off. This is SPY or the S&P 500 ETF stocks relative to long-term treasuries, the TLT ETF. We tweeted this chart. You can find it if you scroll through our Twitter postings on Saturday. Quick point. Ratio peaks here on September 14th. This is what risk off looks like. Stock market peaked on this day here, September 14th, if you go back and look. Here, the ratio is now clearly in a downtrend. This is a downward sloping trend channel. Until the ratio can move into this area here, better yet, make a higher high, we'll continue to be skeptical of risk on relative to risk off. Before we start with this risk on versus risk off chart, a lot of lines here, a lot going on. This is a busy, noisy chart. It looks very, very complex. So before you say, hey, I'm hitting pause, I'm hitting stop, this guy's lost me, we're going to take this step by step and look at things in isolation. None of it is difficult. We're looking at the S&P 500 relative to the VIX. This is a weekly chart here. This is the ratio, S&P 500 relative to the VIX. When the ratio is rising, that's risk on. Stock market bottoms eventually goes higher. When the ratio falls, that's what risk off looks like. This is the stock market, consolidation and down. Point of the exercise. This is what a peaking process looks like, consolidation in stocks down consolidation in stocks down. And then these green lines here mark a bottom. So we want to compare the current state of affairs. Does it look more like a peaking process and a rollover, or does it look more like a bottom? Here, when stocks consolidated and went down, the ratio hit this line here, which acted as resistance. The ratio turned down. Stocks went sideways, and they went down. Eventually here, these moving averages, this is the exponential six-week moving average in blue and the 12-week standard moving average in red. This is a bearish cross here. The stock market accelerated to the downside. Bearish cross here. Stock market accelerated to the downside. We don't have that yet here. So that leaves the door open potentially to some more consolidation or upside. Here, there was another high that was made before this bearish cross with the moving averages. Let's shift gears now and look at an indicator, MACD, or actually this is PPO, which is similar to MACD. This is PPO for this ratio. So think of this as PPO or a MACD-like indicator which measures momentum for risk on versus risk off. You can see during a peaking process here, we eventually get a bearish MACD crossover here. Stocks actually went up after that, but eventually they went down. Here's a peaking process in the stock market. Eventually you get PPO black rolling over and getting a bearish cross here and the stock market went down. In the present day, this is rolling over, so there are similarities to this point right here and this point here. Stocks were weak after that point and this point here. Stocks did bounce, but then they went down. So you'd have to say that PPO does look similar to these peaks here. Does it look like a bottom? Here's where the stock market bottomed. No, it doesn't really look anything like that. Black is well below red. A lot of white space here. Here's a bottom or a buy point in stocks. And PPO doesn't really look the same now. Bottom or buy point in stocks really doesn't look similar. Moving back to simple support and resistance. Resistance at this line. Stocks were eventually weak. Resistance for the ratio in this area here, consolidation weakness. 
If I follow this line across, you can see those same areas of consolidation and weakness have come into play here and the ratio has rolled over again. So the last two times when that happened, stocks were weak. You have to say that this looks bearish. There's a however coming. Here, support, when the ratio held and bounced here, stocks eventually did well. Support for the ratio here, it eventually moved higher. If I move up here, this was actually a good buy point for stocks. If I follow the same line up, buy point, to here, this acted as support for the ratio. If I move up, that's a good buy point. Here, support, that's a good buy point. If I follow that same line all the way up, we're at it again. So this is a mixed bag. We don't know whether this will dominate resistance or will we potentially get a bounce here similar to what we saw here and here. So this is the open mind scenario for the stock market that says it's possible that this ratio will hold here again and stocks will move higher next week. We'll see what happens. The whole point of this exercise is how we close next week with this ratio. If we close up here, obviously that'll be bullish. You can see that's a big pop higher here. Same thing here, big pop higher here. So what you would expect next week would be if we see the move higher scenario, that you would get a gap open. This is a gap here, a bullish gap. This is a bullish gap. So we'll probably learn a lot on Monday. If this ratio gaps up, obviously bullish, we may move all the way to this line here, or this line here may act as resistance. If we move into this area here, obviously that's bearish. You can see here, we actually gap down. It's a candlestick all the way here. So next week, if we gap down, we'd be looking for this area to possibly come in as bullish support for the ratio. We'll scroll down now and we'll look at some indicators. Just keep in mind the orange lines tell us that's a yellow or red flag for stocks. Yellow or red flag. Green lines are buy points. These lines have been extended down so we can look and see what the indicators look like. So now we're looking at RSI for this risk on risk off ratio. This is what a bottom in stocks looks like. Notice RSI drops below 50 and then rebounds. RSI drops below 50 then rebounds. Below 50 then rebounds. We haven't done that yet. So maybe there's more downside in the cards here. This is what a peaking process looks like. We're falling towards 50. This is a negative point for the stock market. And eventually we break below it. Fall, eventually break below. Here we're falling. Somewhat of a mixed bag here. Really can't say, but I'd have to say this looks more like an orange spot than it does a green spot. MACD, we looked at PPO. It's very similar. When the market, stock market peaks, black is moving towards red. Stock market peaks, black begins to move towards red. Black is moving towards red here. There's no question this looks more like a top than it does a buy point, which would be these green areas here. Let's move down to Williams percent R that looks at momentum for the ratio of the S&P 500 relative to the VIX. This is what a stock market top looks like. Momentum comes below negative 20 here. This is a yellow flag for risk. Here, this is a top in the stock market. Eventually, we move below. You'd have to say that the current market, this, overbought, moves out of that territory. This looks similar to this, which looks similar to a top. Overbought, overbought, come below it. Stocks are weak after that. Here's what a bottom looks like. This is a buy point in the S&P 500. We came all the way down to oversold and then moved out. Came all the way down to oversold and then moved out. Oversold and then moved out. 
Williams percent R looks more like a top than a bottom. There's no question about that. The Copic curve, when the market peaks, this is a good sell point for the S&P 500. The Copic curve is rolling over. Sell point for the S&P 500. The Copic curve is rolling over. Rolling over. This looks like a top. What does a bottom look like with the Copic curve? This is a good buy point for the S&P 500. It occurs below the zero line, and eventually the Copic curve turns up. Buy point below the zero line, eventually it turns up. Buy point below the zero line, eventually it turns up. No question, the Copic curve looks more like a top in the S&P 500 on a weekly chart than a bottom. CCI, a top. Overbought moves out of overbought territory. Overbought, this is a top, moves out. Overbought moves out. CCI looks more like a top than it does a bottom. A bottom, you're oversold and you move out. A bottom, you're oversold, you move out. Oversold, you move out. Let's go down to TSI. This is what a top in the stock market looks like. Black rolling over and moving towards red, you get a bearish cross. This is what a top in the stock market looks like. Black moving towards red rolls over, eventually you get a cross. Black moving towards red, we do not have the cross yet. This is what a bottom in the S&P 500 looks like. Eventually black moves towards red. Eventually black starts to move towards red. Eventually black is moving toward red and you get a bullish cross. TSI looks more like a top in the S&P 500 right now than it does a bottom. Let's look at ADX, which measures the strength of a trend. When the S&P 500 peaks, ADX for the ratio of risk on to risk off, or the S&P 500 relative to the VIX, the green line is falling. It's a yellow flag for risk. Currently, the green line is falling. It's a yellow flag for risk. Top in the S&P 500, green line falls. What does a bottom look like? This is a good buy point for the S&P 500. You'll notice green is below red at a buy point, and then it starts to move up. Here, green is below red, and it starts to move up. Green is below red, and it starts to move up. There's no question this looks more like a top in the S&P 500 than it does a bottom. Rate of change. This is where stock market peaks here. Rate of change falling eventually moves towards zero and drops below zero before your buy point. Rate of change. This is a red flag for stocks falling eventually moves below zero. Current rate of change, falling, moving towards zero. This area here looks similar to this area roughly here. This is a yellow flag for stocks. Falling, moving towards zero. Here's a buy point for risk on. It occurs with a rate of change below zero. Buy point occurs after rate of change is already moved below zero and is now rising. Buy point rate of change below zero, and then it starts to rise. Rate of change currently looks more like a top in the stock market than it does a bottom. Next week, we'll keep an open mind. If these indicators turn up, then the bounce scenario for the S&P 500, or the head and shoulders scenario that we showed you, a possible move towards 1545-ish, or 1550-ish is a possibility. Right now, it's actually the bulls that need something to change. These charts currently side with the bearish case, and the bulls are the ones that need improvement next week. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we've got a long video this week, but these markets are difficult for all of us. So we feel going through the credit markets makes sense for all of us here. Very, very similar concept to what we just looked at with the S&P 500 relative to the VIX. This is now just the credit markets. This is riskier credit or junk bonds divided by conservative bonds or long-term treasuries TLT. 
This is what risk on looks like when the ratio of junk bonds to treasuries rises. It's risk on and the S&P 500 shown in black here tends to do well. This is what risk off looks like. Stock market consolidates eventually is weak. Resistance here. This is what a peak in the S&P 500 looks like. It occurs at this line. Stocks were weak. If I move over here, line acts as resistance. Here, stock market consolidates and is weak. If I move across here, the present day, we bounced off the same trend line where the S&P 500 peaked before. Resistance. This point here is similar to this point here. In this point here, where weakness in the stock market eventually followed. You can also see here, after resistance was hit, the stock market did take a leg higher here. So a leg higher scenario is possible, but as long as we remain below this line here, we would be skeptical of that rally from a risk-reward perspective. If you come down here, you can see the S&P 500 peaked at this resistance level here. Consolidation, weakness. This is poor risk-reward ratio, even though the S&P 500 takes another leg higher and also moves higher here. All of this occurs below this resistance line. We can also draw this line down, this dotted line here. Here's the ratio. Dotted line acts as resistance here. Stock market consolidates and rolls over. If we come down here, what that tells us is this may act as support, so we have to be open to that. One reason why we know this dotted line might be relevant, it acted as support here. This is a parallel line, this line here. It's parallel to this line here. Here is a point where it acted as support. Stocks went higher. Here it acted as support. Stocks went higher. So when we get down, if we get down to this area here, we have to keep an open mind. There's not much white space here. You can see the stock market peaked here. This dotted line here acted as resistance. Here's the ratio. This is a candle here. Eventually, the ratio fell. This line here acted as resistance. If I follow that line up, it leaves the leg higher scenario open. You can see here we gapped. The ratio gapped from here to here. The stock market took another leg higher. If I follow this trend line up, we could gap up here, and this could act as resistance. This is the leg higher scenario in the S&P 500. If we were to move back to this line here, as we did here, we could see another leg higher in the stock market. Since this video has been long, we won't look at the indicators, but I can tell you that we have looked at them and similar to the S&P 500 relative to the VIX, here's what a top looks like in the stock market. The Copic curve is rolling over at a top. The Copic curve is peaking and rolling over at a top. Looks similar. All of these indicators look more like a top than they do a bottom. CCI, overbought, comes out of overbought territory. This is a red flag for the stock market. Overbought, comes out of overbought territory. This peak in the S&P 500 peaking process and this peaking process looks similar to here. Overbought comes out of overbought territory. If we looked at all of these indicators in detail, they all, as they sit now, lean towards the risk off or peaking process case. They could improve next week, but if they do, there's resistance here, here, and here for risk on, which tells us that even if we bounce below these lines on this chart, 
the risk-reward ratio for investors will still probably be weak. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.